Imagine that you could see the birthplace of stars in stunning detail, revealing the secrets of how they form and evolve. Imagine you could detect a molecule that is essential for life as we know it, and that has puzzled astronomers for decades. Imagine you could do all this with a single telescope, the most powerful and ambitious ever built. Well, you don't have to imagine anymore because NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has done it. In this episode, we will explore the amazing image of the Orion Nebula that Webb captured and the groundbreaking discovery that cracks a 40-year-old space mystery. Stay tuned, because you don't want to miss this. The Orion Nebula is one of the most famous and beautiful objects in the night sky. It is a giant cloud of gas and dust, about 1,300 light-years away from Earth, where new stars are born. It is also a cosmic laboratory, where we can study the chemistry and physics of star formation and planetary systems. But to see the Orion Nebula in all its glory, we need a special telescope, one that can peer through the dust and reveal the hidden wonders inside. And for sure, as you may have guessed, that telescope is James Webb, the successor of the Hubble Space Telescope. Webb was launched in December 2021, and after six months of testing and calibration, it was ready to take its first science image. And what better target than the Orion Nebula? Webb pointed its eye at the heart of the nebula, where a cluster of young stars called the Trapezium is located. These stars are only a few million years old, and they are so bright and hot that they ionize the surrounding gas, making it glow in different colors. The result was stunning. Webb's image of the Orion Nebula is the most detailed and spectacular ever taken. It shows us not only the trapezium stars, but also hundreds of other stars in various stages of formation. Some are still embedded in their dusty cocoons. Others have cleared away their natal material and are shining brightly. Some are even surrounded by disks of gas and dust, where planets may be forming. Webb's image also reveals the complex structure and dynamics of the nebula. We can see filaments, pillars, bubbles, jets, and shocks, all sculpted by the winds and radiation from the stars. We can also see how different regions have different temperatures, densities, and compositions. And most importantly, how the nebula is changing over time, as new stars are born and old ones die. But Webb's image is not only beautiful, it is also scientifically valuable. By studying it in detail, astronomers can learn more about how stars form and evolve, how they interact with their environment, and how they influence each other's fate. They can also compare Webb's image with previous observations from other telescopes, such as Hubble or Spitzer, and see how the nebula has changed over time. However, this image is not only about stars, it is also about molecules. And one molecule in particular caught Webb's attention, C3H2, or cyclopropenylidene. This molecule is very important for life as we know it, because it contains carbon atoms arranged in a ring shape. Carbon rings are the building blocks of many organic compounds, such as DNA or amino acids. But C3H2 is also very elusive and mysterious. It was first detected in space in 1983, but its origin and abundance have remained a mystery for 40 years, until now. Webb's image of the Orion Nebula was not only taken in infrared light, but also in spectroscopic mode. This means that Webb split the light from different parts of the nebula into its component wavelengths or colors, creating a spectrum for each pixel in the image. A spectrum is like the fingerprint of an object. It tells us what elements or molecules are present in it, how hot or cold they are, and how fast or slow they are moving. By analyzing the spectra from Webb's image, astronomers were able to identify C3H2 in several regions of the Orion Nebula. They were able to measure its abundance and distribution. They also determined its temperature and velocity, and essentially compare it with other molecules that are also present in the nebula. And what they found was astonishing. They found that C3H2 is very abundant in the Orion Nebula, more than any other place in the universe. They found that C3H2 is mostly concentrated in the densest and coldest regions of the nebula, where new stars and planets are forming. They found that C3H2 is very reactive and versatile, forming different kinds of bonds with other atoms and molecules. They found that C3H2 is the heart of much of interstellar chemistry, 
as it can lead to the formation of more complex organic molecules, such as benzene or naphthalene. This discovery was possible thanks to Webb's unique capabilities. Webb has a spectrometer called NARSPEC, which can observe up to 100 objects at the same time, with high sensitivity and resolution. This allows Webb to scan large areas of the sky and detect faint signals from molecules that are otherwise hard to see. Webb also has a spectrometer called MIRI, which can observe in the mid-infrared range, where C3H2 emits most of its radiation. This allows Webb to measure the temperature and velocity of C3H2 and other molecules, and to study their chemical reactions. Webb's discovery of C3H2 in the Orion Nebula is a major breakthrough for astrochemistry, the science that studies the chemistry of space. It solves a 40-year-old mystery about the origin and abundance of this molecule, which reveals new insights into the formation and evolution of stars and planets. And most importantly, it opens new possibilities for the search for life in the universe. But Webb's discovery is not only about C3H2, it is also about us. Because C3H2 is not only a molecule in space, it is also a molecule in us. C3H2 is not only important for astrochemistry, but also for biochemistry, the science that studies the chemistry of life. C3H2 is one of the simplest molecules that contains carbon atoms arranged in a ring shape. Carbon rings are very common in living organisms, as they form the basis of many organic compounds, such as DNA or amino acids. DNA is the molecule that stores our genetic information, and amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, which are essential for our structure and function. But how did carbon rings get into living organisms? How did they form on Earth? And how did they evolve into more complex molecules? These are some of the biggest questions in biology, and they are closely related to the questions in astrochemistry. One possible answer is that carbon rings were already present in space, before life emerged on Earth. They were formed by chemical reactions in interstellar clouds, such as the Orion Nebula, where C3H2 and other molecules were abundant. They were then delivered to Earth by comets or asteroids, which are made of dust and ice from those clouds. They were then incorporated into primitive cells, which used them to synthesize more complex molecules. This hypothesis is supported by several lines of evidence. For example, we have found traces of organic compounds, including carbon rings, in meteorites that have fallen on Earth. We have also detected organic compounds, including carbon rings, on other bodies in the solar system, such as Mars or Titan. We have also simulated in laboratories how organic compounds can form from simple molecules under conditions similar to those in space or on early Earth. But this hypothesis is not conclusive. There are still many uncertainties and gaps in our knowledge. For example, we don't know how common carbon rings are in space or how they vary from place to place. We don't know how efficient or selective their delivery to Earth was or how they survived the harsh conditions on our planet. We don't know how they interacted with other molecules, with water, or with energy sources on Earth. We don't know how they led to the emergence of life. This is where Webb's discovery comes in. By finding C3H2 in the Orion Nebula, Webb has provided us with new data and new clues about the origin and distribution of carbon rings in space. By studying C3H2 and other molecules in more detail, Webb can help us understand their chemical properties and reactions better. By observing other regions and objects in space, Webb can help us compare and contrast different environments and scenarios for organic synthesis. Webb's discovery is not only about C3H2, it is also about us. Because by studying C3H2 in space, we can learn more about ourselves on Earth. Thank you for watching this video about the latest discovery made by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.